Diane Sawyer and Bill Weir reporting with Lama Hassan. Islam, questions and answers. Well, as Western countries increasingly push back against women wearing the veil, we wanted to know more about what is real option, what is oppression? Whether in the name of piety, Islam is treating women as just property, second-class citizens in a culture controlled by men. Here's my ABC News colleague, Lama Hassan. In too many Muslim communities, women are being forced to veil themselves. From the crest of a sand dune emerges one of the most arresting and controversial images of Islam, a woman covered from head to toe. To be enshrouded in a cloth prison is clearly suppression. But this is an American, 32-year-old Hiba Ahmed, who lives with her husband and children near Albuquerque, New Mexico. I do not see covering as a negative thing. It is something that I love, and nobody could pay me to take this off. But have you not taken it a step too far? Because in the Quran, it doesn't say that women should cover their faces. That's correct. It says that they should dress modestly. Exactly. But we also know that many of the pious Muslim women in our history also chose to cover their face as well. And it's an extra step that people can do. Hiba started wearing that veil that called an iqab after 9-11. The attacks inspired her to question, then commit to her faith. So did the sexual harassment Hiba says she experienced in her workplace. So many times in society, women are objectified, they're sexualized, they're used to sell product. This is my liberation and this is the way that I want to uh, be taken seriously. A personable American in a niqab is an appealing image, but it is far from the norm. But in a Muslim country, women are absolutely, undoubtedly oppressed. The women I've spoken to say they are empowered. It makes them feel free because they are choosing to wear this, the niqab or to cover Because they're faces. in a free country and they can. And I will tell you that any woman who is not free is not coming on your show and telling you about it so she can go home and get abused. It's never going to happen. Pamela Geller says it's important to remember the coerced coverings, the honor killings, the stonings, harsh examples of Sharia, a system of Islamic law which can be interpreted in many ways, but is often applied to oppress women. <laughs> In this broadcast recently shown on Egyptian television, a Muslim cleric explains how and why a husband should beat his wife. In extreme cases, Sharia is about more than piety. It's also about treating women as chattel. This is what it means to, you know, submit to the will of Allah, to submit to your father's wishes, to submit to your husband, to cover Scholar yourself. and activist Ayan Hirsi Ali is one of the world's strongest critics of Islam. She says while the Bible and the Quran both contain misogynist passages, there is a crucial historical difference. Unlike Islam, the Jewish and Christian traditions underwent major transformations during the Enlightenment. These are religions that were subjected to close scrutiny, to systematic criticism. That is a process that Islam in general has not gone through. The impact has been profound. According to a recent study, 12 of the 14 countries with the worst gender inequality are predominantly Muslim. How would you defend Sharia law? I mean, honor killings and coerced head coverings are actually not Islamic. Um, there are cultural and, and tribal practices. But even here in America, there are horror stories. In 2008, Amina and Sara Sayed of Texas were allegedly killed by their father after he found out they were dating non-Muslims. And last year in Arizona, 20-year-old Noor al-Maliki died after her father ran her over. Police say he claimed he did so because she was too Americanized before he pleaded not guilty to murder. There are isolated cases, Absolutely. but they do happen. They happen they, in this country. Honor killings mm -hmm. happen in this country. So that That's has not nothing to, to do it, with the culture. Right, but that they are in fact as isolated incidences and they, they do not represent um, the vast majority of Muslims. I am scared of devout Islam, of the Sharia in this country. I am. Geller, a fixture of protests against the so-called Grand Zero Mosque, ran these bus ads offering support to people, especially women who are trying to leave Islam. 
Islam, but are fearful of retribution. I'm not talking to all Muslims. I'm talking to Muslims that are in trouble, that need help. There are Islamic supremacists, and we see that they do try to impose their will on the societies that they infiltrate, and we need to be careful. That resistance to Islamic influence echoes French President Nicolas Sarkozy's view of the niqab. It's not a religious symbol, he says. It is a sign of enslavement. It will not be welcome in the French Republic. What's happening here in France might be a model for those countries looking to push back against the influx of Islamic culture. This year, the French parliament overwhelmingly passed a new and controversial law forbidding women to cover their faces in public.